To write the balanced net ionic equation for copper to sulfate plus ammonium phosphate, let's first balance the molecular equation. That'll look like this. If you need help balancing the molecular equation, there's a link in the description of this video for how to do that. Next, we need to write the state for each substance based on the solubility rules. That'll give us this. So in general, sulfates, they're soluble, so these will be aqueous, dissolved in water, dissociate into their ions. Phosphates are usually insoluble, but ammonium compounds are very soluble. So ammonium phosphate, that'll be soluble. We have this ammonium sulfate, ammonium compound again, very soluble. But copper 3 phosphate, that's insoluble. Copper is a transition metal. So it's insoluble. That means it's going to be a solid. It'll fall to the bottom of the test tube as a precipitate. So it's a solid and a precipitate. Once we have the states, we can split the strong electrolytes into their ions. That'll give us the complete ionic equation. So this is the balanced complete ionic equation. Now we can cross out spectator ions. They're on both sides of the complete ionic equation. In the reactants on the top, I see there are three sulfate ions. Also in the products here on the bottom, three sulfate ions. These are spectator ions. We're going to cross those out. Six ammonium ions. Here again in the products, six ammonium ions, spectator ions get crossed out. That leaves us with the net ionic equation for CuSO4 plus NH3PO4. Let's remove the spectator ions. And this is the balanced net ionic equation. You'll see the atoms are balanced. And if you look at the charges, 3 times 2 plus, that's 6 plus. 2 times 3 minus, 6 minus. That gives us a net charge of 0. And on the product side, this copper 2 phosphate, it's neutral, so its net charge is 0 as well. This is Dr. B with the balanced net ionic equation for copper 2 sulfate plus ammonium phosphate. Thanks for watching.